Hello everyone, my name is Olu Martins, and today I want to speak to you about when prayers go unanswered. What do you do when your prayers go unanswered? Have you ever wondered why God readily answers some prayers speedily and others seem to take a long time? Or perhaps you may even think that the prayers are not answered. Why is it that the Lord will not answer a prayer of perhaps uh, a, a, a person that is crying out to the Lord to save a, a child that is ill? How come some of those prayers are not answered readily? One would think that if someone was crying out to the Lord for, a, uh, for provision so he could feed his family, one would think that such a prayer would be answered readily. But sometimes it is not. How do you cope when your prayers are not answered? See, one of the things that we need to do is we need to be careful when our prayers are not being answered readily. See, it is natural for someone to be discouraged and depressed when they have been praying for something for a long time and no answers are out there. It's very, very easy for that person to start to become discouraged. See, the problem with that is that the enemy may take advantage of the vulnerability and the weakness that comes from that situation. Well, the Bible tells us that the flesh is weak. And so the enemy may come in and may start to work on our mind and our thoughts. We may start hearing things like, God can't be trusted because if he can, he would have answered your prayers. We may start having thoughts like, God doesn't care or God is not able. This are very, very dangerous thoughts and we must be careful to rebuke those thoughts immediately. See, if we don't, those thoughts can lead us to a place where we don't want to go. Ultimately, we may start to lose our faith in God. And so one of the things that we need to be careful of when our prayers seem to go unanswered is we need to guard ourselves, knowing that the enemy is looking for an opportunity to come in and to start messing with our minds. But let's go back to the original question. Why is it that certain prayers are not answered readily? When, when you look at the issue of the flesh being weak, well, the Bible also says the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. And so if you are being troubled in your thoughts regarding the power of God, regarding the fact that God can be trusted, what you need to do is you need to continue to pray. Well, you need to continue to pray because you are not alone. The spirit in you is not weak. While your flesh may be, may be weak, the Holy Spirit is not weak. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us in prayer. And so the Holy Spirit takes charge of prayers, but we must pray. Jesus said, men ought to pray and not lose heart so we must continue to pray no matter what and so when you look at this issue of prayer and prayers being unanswered one of the things that we can do to help us understand um, why this may be is to look at two bible uh, two stories from the bible let us start with the apostle paul in second corinthians chapter 12 when he had a thorn in the flesh. Now, we don't know exactly what that thorn was. It might have been a physical issue. It might have been a spiritual issue. But we do know that the apostle had a problem and he needed that problem to be resolved. And so the Bible tells us that he cried out to the Lord, not once, not twice, but three times. He kept, up, he kept on crying out to the Lord. And finally, the third time, the Lord said to him, 
my grace is sufficient for you. And so in that situation, the answer to Apostle Paul's prayer was God's grace. God's grace, he said, was sufficient. God's power, he said, was sufficient. And so the Apostle Paul went on with that. We never heard about the issue of the thorn in the flesh anymore. It ended. God said that my power uh, uh, shows itself, displays itself in my weakness. And so while the apostle might have been weak, he was a great platform for God to display his power. And so this is one way that um, we cope with unanswered prayers. Sometimes the prayers are answered in a different way, different from what we perhaps uh, desire the prayers to, the, desire the outcome to be. Another place in the Bible, another story in the Bible that kind of gives us help in this area is to look at the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1. It talks about Anna. Anna was barren for many years. She actually was um, ridiculed by others. Her husband had another uh, wife who had children, so she was continually ridiculed by others and made fun of. And so year after year, she cried out to the Lord in prayer for the Lord to uh, give her the fruit of the womb. Finally, the time came when God decided to give her a son. And the son was the prophet Samuel. And so after many years of crying out to the Lord, her prayers were answered. What can we learn from these two biblical stories? Well, we can learn a couple of things. First of all, we need to know that God is in control. And what is he in control of? He's in control of three things. Number one, he's in control of time. Number two, he's in control of the outcome of your prayers. And number three, he's in control of the circumstances. When you look at the issue of time, how God is in control of that. In the case of Anna, when the appointed time came, God gave her a child. Now, before the appointed time, you could keep on praying and praying and praying and praying. Nothing happened. The prophet Samuel did not come until the appointed time. And so the Bible says that God makes all things beautiful in his time. And so as we look at the issue of unanswered prayer, we must know that time is in the hands of God. God controls time. There is an appointed time for everything, for everything. The other issue is circumstances. Yes, God controls all circumstances. He controls when a door of opportunity opens and when a door of opportunity shuts. He controls the issues of, of everything surrounding the circumstances of our lives. He put things in our way. He takes things out of our way. That is all in God's control. When we realize this, we can cope better with the issue of deferred or delayed or unanswered prayers. The other thing that we need to bear in mind is that God controls the outcome. A lot of times you may think that, oh, maybe I'm not praying enough. Maybe I'm not doing the right thing. Well, the fact of the matter is, maybe you are. Maybe you are. God is in control of the answers to the prayer. When the Apostle Paul was praying about um, uh, to be relieved from the thorn in the flesh, God had his own way of answering that prayer. I am sure it's not the way that the Apostle imagined that to be. So again, we must know as we look at this issue of prayer that God is in control. The other thing actually that we need to keep in mind is that we must strive to enter God's rest. Now you must say to yourself, what does that mean? What is entering God's rest? Well, God's rest is a place of peace. It's a place where we surrender our restlessness. 
This is a place where we surrender our anxiety. We surrender our troubles. We surrender our fears. We surrender everything that needs to do with, that surrounds the uh, prayers itself. We surrender it all to God. We, we become still. We become still in God's presence. We start to know when we surrender that, yes, everything now is left in the hands of God. See, in our hands, we get troubled. In our hands, things are heavy. That's why the Lord says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. See, our burden is not uh, light. It's heavy. Our burden, our yoke is not easy. Well, we transfer all that burden, we transfer all that care onto the Lord. This is how he wants it. And so when you're thinking to yourself, how come my prayers have not been answered? I want you to think about these things. Also, finally, we must know, no matter what, that God cares. We must know that God loves us. We must know that God wants to give us our heart's desires. We must know that in God, everything that we want exists. We must know that. We must know that the Lord that we serve is just and he is merciful. The, the, the Bible tells us that if we as fathers, if we're willing to give good things unto our children, how much more God Almighty is willing to give good things to us. And so we must continue to strive. We must continue to ask because the Bible says, ask and you will receive. People, But we must continue. The Bible actually says, ask until the Lord establishes. How does he establish? Well, he will make it known in his time. Proverbs uh, 21 tells us that the um, uh, uh, that deliverance is in the hands of God. The horse is prepared for battle, but victory and deliverance, the Bible says, is in the hands of God. When we think about these things, we will no longer be restless. When we think about these things, when we pray, we will put it all in God's hands. When we think about these things, we will not let the enemy still kill and destroy our joy. When we, think about, when we think about these things, God himself will be pleased. He will be pleased. He will be happy to know that we are his children and we know how to cope with unanswered prayers. Well, friends, I just want to thank you for listening to me today. Um, if you have prayers that you've prayed for a long time that have not been answered, think about these things. Put it all in the hands of God, and by God's grace, he will deliver you in Jesus' name.